Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. Today we resume our verse by verse study through the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 10, beginning in verse 16. So get your Bible, if you can, open it up to Matthew chapter 10. The Scripture Verse by Verse website is found at thebibleversebyverse.com. If you want to study the Bible, that's a good place for you to go. If all you want is the Bible, then that's a place for you to go too, because that's all you'll ever find at thebibleversebyverse.com. 38 years of Scripture Verse by Verse, 38 years, four complete series, going on five, going through every single one of the 31,000 plus verses in our English Bible. It's all at the Bible, verse by verse dot com, where all you ever have to do is choose, click, and listen, and all you ever need is your Bible and a hunger for God's Word. Again, the Bible, verse by verse dot com. Now let's pray. Father, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your Word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Matthew ten sixteen. Behold, Jesus says, I send you forth, he's talking to his apostles, as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Sheep among the wolves, meaning that the norm for the apostles and anybody else down to today who proclaims the simple, clear word of God in a straightforward manner is going to rub the vast majority of people the wrong way. Sadly, today the vast majority of professing Christians will be rubbed the wrong way as well. And what Jesus is saying, obviously, sheep among wolves, many people are going to hate you. Many will try to hurt you. They will do whatever they can get away with, but they'll do it. So Jesus tells his apostles and us today to be as wise as a serpent but also as harmless as a dove. So be holy, be as harmless as a dove, be holy, but also be street smart. Be alert, in other words, so that you are not tricked by someone who wants to hurt you. Use common sense. Be wise. Be righteous in character. Speak the truth. Live holy, but be on your guard because you're going to have to be. 17. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. And this is exactly what happened to Many of the apostles, maybe all, I'm not sure. But this is a good example of God being in control of all things and of God working all things together for good to those who live for him and love him. Man, in his wickedness, would arrest the apostles and charge them falsely. But instead of getting upset over their unfair treatment, the apostles were to recognize that God was sovereign even in the midst of their unfair treatment. God was sovereign and God wanted them to use that situation that they find themselves in as an opportunity to tell the civil authorities about the Lord Jesus Christ, an opportunity they otherwise never would have had, see, if they were not arrested. So 
man in his wickedness would do these terrible things, but God wants to use it. And he still wants to use our situations, whether they're pleasant or unpleasant. Look for Christ in the midst of your troubles. Look for ways to serve Jesus in the midst of your troubles because that's why God has allowed them into your life. Don't whine and complain and fret. I'm not saying you can't pray to get out of those troubles. I'm not saying you can't try to get out of those troubles. But if you're there, you're there, and let God use, use you. Otherwise, he wouldn't have you there. 19. But when they deliver you up, be not anxious how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father who speaketh in you. I will never forget going to a church. It happened to be a Pentecostal church. This was probably 30 years ago. But I knew what was going on. This pastor was the kind of guy who, <clears throat> you know, God will provide for me. God will take care of me. God will give me what I need to say when I stand up in front of church. I won't have to prepare. I'll just trust God. It wasn't that he couldn't prepare. It's that he chose not to prepare. And he got up front, and he hymned, and he hawed, and he tried to giggle his way out of what was should have been an embarrassing situation for him. I remember him saying, oh, can you believe this? Oh, can you believe this? Because he was stammering and stuttering and giggling, and he had no idea what he was going to say next. That's putting God to the test. That's not what Jesus is talking about here when he says, don't worry about what you're going to say. The Holy Spirit will give you the words. No, that's not in a situation where you have time to prepare and you should be preparing because the Bible says, study to show yourself approved a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Well, he should have been ashamed. But he probably blamed it on the Holy Spirit, you know, let him down, whatever. But what this is talking about, what Jesus is saying here is that when you are arrested and when you are on trial, God will give you, apostles, the words that you need to speak, meaning the words that will glorify Christ. And this is true for us Christians today as well. Because in a crisis that you had no way to prepare for, in a crisis, God will give you the wisdom to speak the things that he wants everybody there, everyone involved to hear. Now, God doesn't say, well, don't worry about, you know, having the right words to say because, because I'll give you the right words to say, the words that will get you off the hook, <clears throat> the words that will get you out of this trouble that you find yourself in. He doesn't promise to give them the words that will get them out of the trouble. He just promises to give them the words that he wants those people who are causing the trouble to hear. You're going to be my witness. You're going to say what I want you to say. It may cause more problems. Chances are it caused more problems. It sure did with the Apostle Paul. But that's what God is promising. 21. Here we go. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. Treachery and betrayal and backstabbing all await the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. Certainly it awaits them, and it happened to them. So don't get all shook up and fret and get all excited if and when it happens to you because you're a faithful Christian giving out the Word of God, and you won't compromise. Some Christians, I'm telling you, I, I swear they never read the Bible <clears throat> because they live for Jesus and they're treated unfairly as a result and they get all upset. <clears throat> they get all upset. They get all shook up. They all oh, they complain about the unfairness of it all. <clears throat> 
And if they would read the Bible, they would know. Why, why are you surprised? And why are you complaining? Why aren't you trusting God in the midst of it? But treachery and betrayal and backstabbing, that's what all, that's, all those things happen to Jesus. So if they live for Jesus and they're his representatives, they can expect the same thing. And if we live for Jesus and we're his representatives the way we should be, we shouldn't be shocked when those things happen to us either. It's all part of the deal, you know. 22. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. So Jesus is saying, when he says all, what he says here, you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. He's not saying every single human being that makes eye contact with you is going to hate your guts. He's not saying every single human being who walks planet Earth is going to hate you. He's not saying that. He is saying that all cultures and all races and all classes and all nationalities, no matter where it happens to be in this world, will hate the Christian who is truly sold out to Jesus Christ. Not just doing good things, because people can appreciate doing good things, and they can like people. They can like Christians who do good things. But when you stand up and you say, in today's day and age, homosexuality is a sin and you need to repent or you're going to hell. Adultery, living with somebody in sexual immorality is not okay with God and you're going to go to hell if you don't repent. Drunkenness is not a disease. It is a sin. Drug addiction is not a disease. It is a sin. When you say what the Bible says about stuff, you can be the nicest guy in the world, but people from all places, all ages, all skin colors, they're all going to hate you equally. That's what Jesus is saying, because it's not the way it is in the world. You're different. You speak truth, and they don't like truth. And notice what else that Jesus says here in verse 22, and ye shall be hated. So it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy for you to live for me. No matter where you are in this world, it's not going to be easy for you to be a real Christian who speaks the truth, lives the truth. It's not going to be easy for you. Ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But then look what Jesus says. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. I know a man who quit. Well, he's on fire for Jesus, supposedly, for a long time. They just whine and complain because it was so hard. So many people did not like him. Finally, he walked away from Jesus. Carry on. You're going to end up going to hell. Because he who endures to the end shall be saved. Endurance. Endurance with Jesus is the mark of a true Christian. So if you endure until the end of persecution, if you endure through the persecution to the very end of your life, no matter what that may mean for you, if you don't, and that means you don't renounce your faith in Jesus Christ. You don't turn your back on Jesus in order to get along with the world. Even, even if it means saving your life or losing your life, if you don't do that, if you remain true, then your endurance proves that you are really saved. But Charles Stanley, he's gone now. But, you know, he, and he's not alone. Many modern evangelicals think this. You, you, as long as you made a profession of faith at some point in your life, it doesn't matter what else you do. You, you can renounce Christ and you're still saved. You can become an atheist and you're still saved because, after all, you prayed the sinner's prayer or you made a profession of faith. Now you can become a Muslim. You're still saved. That's so, 
That's so unbiblical. How can you be so caught up in your warped theology that you overlooked so many Bible verses that came out of the mouth of Jesus himself that say the exact opposite? Just incredible to me. Theology is important, but it's not that important. It's not important that you get your little systematic theology down pat and then you twist the scripture to make it fit or you ignore it and you call it a problem verse, which they do an awful lot. He who endures to the end shall be saved. 23. But when they persecute you in this city, flee into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man come. Jesus doesn't expect us to stay in a situation where we're getting beating, be, be, beaten, if we can avoid it. He doesn't expect us to stay in a dangerous situation if we can get out of it. Just use common sense. Just don't renounce Christ in order to avoid persecution. And we're going to pick it up right here next time because there's a whole lot more in verses 25, excuse me, 23 through 25 that I want to talk about. So join me next time. In the meantime, study all of God's Word with me at the Scripture Verse by Verse website, and that's found at thebibleversebyverse.com. Choose, click, and listen from four complete series going on five. And remember, you can be a part of Scripture Verse by Verse by praying for me and praying for God's Word. Please do it right now before you forget. Write a note, stick it on the refrigerator door, the bathroom mirror, any place else that you will see it, reminding you to pray for Mike and pray for God's Word. And keep praying, would you? Also, when you take a break from studying with me at thebibleversebyverse.com, go to the front page, click the Donate button, prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. That also makes you a part of this ministry, and I appreciate that as well. So until next time, so long.